welcome back to my YouTube video. I'm so happy to be filming another YouTube video again because I've literally not filmed a YouTube video for like two weeks um, just because of what's been going on that I'm going to obviously talk about in this video as you can see. Um, and yeah, I just feel a little bit behind in terms of like what I need to be doing and stuff like that. But you know, at the end of the day, it's life this type of stuff is going to happen sometimes and you've just got to bounce back as hard as you can so yeah in this video i kind of just wanted to talk a little bit more about what happened why i feel like this kind of stops happening and like the ways that i've kind of dealt with it and how i'm kind of coming back from that um and yeah how i'm feeling at the moment because i keep feeling like right i'm ready now and then like it's like slap i get knocked back down so yeah it was a bit crazy so i just wanted to talk a little bit more about that um and a little bit more about this journey one thing that i've really and i'm not saying that i've necessarily achieved it or whatever but one thing that i've that i said to myself when i started doing my because when i first started my youtube it was more about exposing the health stuff and the health and all this kind of stuff and don't get me wrong i'm still going to be doing some health videos and stuff like that because health is spiritual as well as physical you know there's different parts to it and i think obviously it's very important to still look after our body and be grateful for what we've got and look after our temple of course but obviously my channel after a while when my beliefs changed and I couldn't obviously I wasn't going to teach some of the stuff that or put some of the stuff on my channel that I was going to do before because I don't agree with it now um, and I know it's now not good so I would never do that but it's just slightly changed um obviously I'm very happy with the changes and actually I'm a lot more comfortable talking about this stuff and I actually enjoy it a lot more um but yeah obviously my channel changed into talking more about like my journey with Christ and kind of exposing new age and kind of undoing all the stuff that I was teaching before and telling people like why I feel like what I was teaching before was wrong and, and why I'm coming against that now and I feel like that's really important I feel like it's definitely part of my purpose and I want to do God's will in my life um so I know that my channel's changed but one thing that I wanted to always do with my channel is kind of be as real as I can obviously not everyone's going to put absolutely everything out and you don't have to put stuff out on the internet obviously like I've said you can tell sin like your sins to people you know or people you trust doesn't have to be on the internet but we shouldn't keep things in secret I haven't actually done my full testimony yet but I'm going to be filming that soon because there's some other bits that I left out some juicy bits um that I think some people are going to be quite shocked about um but I'm definitely going to put that out there I'm not scared to put it out um I just haven't really filmed it yet don't get me wrong I'm apprehensive about it but it's, it would never stop me doing it but I'm going to be doing that soon but I've just always felt like I wanted to be real I do feel like now like I've said in my other videos I'm not religious I don't believe in religion at all um and again not judging people that do um but I have I believe in a relationship I believe in certain teachings um and obviously I believe in God I believe in Yeshua I believe in I believe in that but I've always wanted to be real about my journey because I do feel like, and I'm not talking about everyone, obviously, because there are some also amazing people that are very honest about their journey. But I do think sometimes when you come into Christ and, you know, you you kind of let known that these are your beliefs now, like people have this, especially people out, even people inside and out, but especially sometimes outside, like, oh, well, you're in Christ now. Why are you doing that? And, you know, there's also a lot of people in the faith that we know that are very judgmental, um, and that judge people wrongly and i do believe in judgment 100 percent, but i believe it to be done in the right way and out of love whereas a lot of that today is not coming from that place it's happening out of frustration and ego and anger and just all these kind of like human-based emotions and one thing that i wanted to do was be honest with this because i think a lot of people pretend like they or they they can act like they're out here not sitting and again when i say this i'm not stereotyping by the way because i hate that because i feel like because of that the rest of us get stereotyped which is not true and this is and that can be the same for faith race whatever and it should it, we should never be stereotyping like that because there are different people within that but there are obviously still a lot of people that do judge like that and kind of look down at other people and, and that's not what we should be doing and I think it can be very discouraging and what I really dislike as well when there's so many people bickering about this bit of scripture and that bit of scripture and a lot of it isn't a salvation issue and it's like this is not what God wants us to be bickering over his side but over it like that because it makes us I, I guess the ego comes in and I just I'm really against all of that and I won't even really engage in conversation like that anymore even if people are messaging me just because it it really just it, it kind of saddens me and it also kind of infuriates me so I want, I want to kind of stay away from that because I don't feel like it's right but I do feel like people expect you 
or like, oh, well, you shouldn't be saying that or doing that because you're in Christ now. And it's like, well, just because you've given your life, first of all, we know we're not going to be perfect. Obviously, otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have died for us on the cross if we were going to be perfect because, you know, that would have been totally pointless. So we know we're sinful regardless, you know. So it's like we can't be looking down at other people because it's not like, oh, well, your sin's worse than my sin. And, you know, it's not like that. Like, if you're sinning, you're sinning. You know, it's a good chance we're going to end up in the same place regardless of what that is. So I think it's a thing where it's like, it's good to be honest about your journey. Like we're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. We're going to sin. We're not perfect. And for us to be, um, for some people, sorry, to be out there making it, you know, making it out like it's that way. Like I just don't agree with like, I, I have, I'm not going to lie. Like since I came into Christ, my life has been more challenging than it ever has been. It wasn't like I gave my life to Yeshua and suddenly my life got easier. It got harder because at the end of the day, like, and don't get me wrong. It's not to say that it's bad. I'm not saying that giving you, obviously it's not. Um, you know, it comes with so many blessings and like I feel protected. I don't have the same worries that I have it before, you know, because I just know God's got me. Don't get me wrong, I'm still working through certain things, but it's just a different kind of feeling. I don't feel like that same person. And I'm less worried about here and more worried about eternity. So of course it's the most blessed thing you could ever do but it's gonna come with challenges you know it doesn't say oh join the faith and you never be tested and everything's just you know swimmingly once you join like it's honestly the devil if the devil's already got you he doesn't need to do as much to come after you once you give your life to christ and you come away from the devil he's coming for you there's assigned demons the same way there's assigned angels that are going to be there to wait to be able to attack you and it gets worse when you rebaptize. it gets worse when you're born again it gets worse when you give your life to christ because you get attacked more because you're coming away from that and you don't want to, the devil don't want to lose you, you know? So it's like, it, it, it's hard and I've felt more challenged now than ever. And I just, I, I would never want to come across on my channel like it's some easy journey. Like I want to be real and honest about my journey. If I mess up, I'm going to admit that. I don't care what people think or when people judge me. I only care what he thinks. And that's all that matters. So I've always wanted to try and make this channel or make my channel kind of an honest journey. It's not to say I'm going to share every little detail of my life, but I want to be real about it. You know, when I mess up and I fall off, I want to talk about it, you know, because it's like we're all going to go through that. And it's like, don't feel like, don't let Satan make you feel like I've said in other videos, you're not worthy. You can't get back up. You can't fight. All our sins are forgiven. You know, that God forgets them if we repent from our heart and we try and do better. And this is the thing for me, like... I really want to be real about this journey and show the ups and the downs because there's it's, there's going to be both. And obviously at the end of it, there's always going to be more ups because the gift of being able to get into the kingdom, mate, that trumps everything. So regardless, you are going to be blessed, but it's, it's going to be challenging and we're going to go through hard times. But the catch 22 is when these, obviously when more end times, things start happening and the revelation, the book of revelation start playing out more and more you're only going to be covered and okay if you have and you if you have the belief in in God and the son because that's what we need to be saved and to be covered so you we're going to need that even though it seems tough it'll be a hell of a lot tougher without it so yeah i just this is why i just want to be honest about my journey i know you know people might judge or whatever like i don't really care to be quite honest um I just want to be real and I just hope it helps other people because I think giving unrealistic expectations doesn't help people um, and we need to stay strong and stick together because like, I've just seen in uh, Marcus Rogers has recently posted a video because I'm literally filming this this the same day I'm going to put this video out Marcus Rogers posted something people should go and check out about how bad the spiritual warfare because I keep saying in my videos I swear over the last four weeks I would say but especially over the last two I feel like the spiritual warfare is really high um, and it's like I literally feel like I'm being attacked constantly and i think a lot of other people have said that as well so that like, he was talking about some big changes coming so it was an interesting video anyway i thought people might want to check that out but yeah anyway into the main bit of this video so if you are interested to hear more and what's been going on keep listening yeah so it's been a bit of a crazy few weeks as you can tell by the title i had to go into hospital now Obviously, the title sounds more dramatic than it was. I wasn't about to die or anything, although I may have felt like that at the time. Um, so the funniest thing to me is, and this is why sometimes it can be a bit of a, to have to admit this, like, I never get sick. I'm not going to lie. I never get sick. And I did a video about this. Um, I don't get ill. Um, yeah. But before I gave, this is before, bear in mind, this is before I gave my life to Christ, right? Never got sick. And these, even bear in mind, I never got sick, even during times where I would trash my body before I started getting on more the health stuff and all that. Because obviously I know that, you know, God's given us herbs, God's given us healthy food and we should look after our temple. Obviously, of course, it's the devils that want us to eat all this rubbish and sugary food and all that. So I know we're supposed to be eating certain things that are right for our body. Um, 
to look after ourselves and you know to be grateful and for our temple and to look after that but i did obviously we all go through periods but before that i went through a lot of periods where i eat junk food all the time and even then i still never got sick like i just never got sick um and i do believe at the time it was probably because i was maybe at some point some of it was the kind of new agey stuff because i was very much into the J dr joe spencer thought stuff which obviously i'm very against now and i don't follow but yeah i just i just found like i just never got sick so i was just like you know it's pretty cocky about that um anyway i soon got taught a lesson but yeah bear in mind i've never really been hospital apart from when i had a needle stick injury which is what that's not sickness that's protocol that you have to go hospital everything was fine anyway but anyway i've done i don't go hospital and people know me like i have to literally be in a dire amount of pain for me to ever even turn up because i don't like wasting nhs time because don't get me wrong although i don't agree with a lot of the medical system like a lot of those people are generally good people really and have a good heart not every worker i'm sure but a lot of the doctors and stuff like they generally just want to help people they've got good hearts you know and i know they do a good job and i would never disrespect that and turn up if i didn't really need it i find that a lot of people waste um, a and E time by doing that and I don't agree with it so I'm very funny about like whether I go or not or whatever um but yeah so bear in mind like I just come out of my relapse just started to stop smoking again my anxiety went and in fact I actually still don't have anxiety now praise the lord great um my anxiety went I felt a lot better my low moods went like I honestly just felt a lot better and I was like right I'm ready to attack this week I said to myself this week because bear in mind before that I'd relapsed, I've been smoking, I've been stressed, I had low moods, I weren't really working. I was like, this week, I'm going to work hard. I'm not cancelling nobody. Nothing's defeating me. I'm going to work every day. I'm doing what I need to do. And, I'm, and I feel better anyway. Like my anxiety was better. I just generally felt better. So I was like, right, this week I'm on it. I'm coming back. Um, Monday was fine. It came to the Tuesday. Bear in mind, this Tuesday was my busiest day and not working was making me feel worse because it has other problems. And then, you know, it all spirals. It's a vicious circle. So I was like, I need to be able to work. So bear in mind, this was my busiest day. I had a lot of patients to see this day and it got to like my third patient. And I started, like I was in their house and I was suddenly, I was like, I started feeling really sick, which like, I wasn't that bothered about. Like sometimes I throw up, it is what it is. I move on, I get over it. Um, but I was like, I feel really sick. And I was at the patient's house, you know, when someone's talking to you and you're thinking like, I can't answer because if I answer, I'm going to throw up. You know, when you go to talk, but you gag and you're like, mm. and at this point, like, I was like, I'm going to throw up. And I was like, I really don't want to be sick in this patient's house because it's going to be so embarrassing. But I couldn't answer the patient. I was like gagging. Like, it was just terrible. You're like trying to think of things to not make me feel sick. I literally legged it out of this person's house, legged it back to my car and I threw up. Luckily I had a bag in my car, I threw up in a bag in my car. So I was like, great. And I started to get a few stomach pains, but it was nothing major. And I, I didn't feel, I just generally felt a little bit unwell, but I was like, you know what? I don't have time for this. Like I've still got two more people to go. I don't want to cancel. I said to myself, I'm not doing this this week. Like, um, I, I, but yeah, I was like, I need to work. But bearing in mind these times, I just felt a bit funny. Like I was like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I was like in tears. I remember WhatsApping my friend. I was literally crying. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do these last few. Like, I don't feel good, but I need to do it. But I was like, I had to push myself. But I told the patients, obviously, like, I'd, I knew it weren't COVID, obviously. But I told the patients beforehand, you know, I'd been ill just to let them know because it's polite. So it's up to you. You're still happy for me to come in. They were fine about it. Um, but yeah, so I got myself together. I went into this person's house. Um, and I ended up doing two patients in, the, in this one house. Um, and yeah, I just... I got through it, but I just, I just felt very like, it just made me feel very like hot. I felt very faint. Like I just didn't feel right. And when I got out of that house, I was like, I just need to go home. And I was literally clocking down the time till I could get out of that house to go home. I was like, I just need to go home, rest. I'll be fine. You know what I mean? So I got back in the car, I was sick again. And then I drove home um, and I got home and I was just trying to chill. And it got to later that evening and the pain got so bad, like so bad. I couldn't move. I couldn't, doesn't matter whether I, whether I was sitting, lying. I tried to have a hot butt. I tried everything. My stomach was in, oh, I can't tell you. I literally feel like I was being stabbed. I was in agony. I couldn't even breathe properly because I couldn't take a deep breath because of the pain. My whole stomach swelled up. I looked about four months pregnant. I was vomiting. I was like, this is, this is not good. I didn't have any other kind of, I did feel a bit hot and cold, but I had no flu type symptoms. But I was done out here, like, I can't tell you how bad the pain was like i was rolling i was crying and it just wouldn't go and i was sitting there for hours all i had in my house was ibuprofen because i don't really take medication um took that even though i know i knew in my heart that it probably was not the best thing to take ibuprofen as a medical professional but i was like you know what i don't even care right now i'm in so much pain i'll just take anything and then it just wouldn't go i tried different things i thought maybe this is trapped wind 
maybe I just need a really big fart and I'll be fine. No, like I tried doing different moves, to, uh, nothing was working. I was in agony and it got so bad. I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, I need pain relief. I need something because this pain is so bad. Like I literally cannot take it. So I ended up um, calling 111 and waiting for a doctor to call me back like an hour later. And by now, who's there? By now, I'm still in agony. Like, I'm in agony. I'm in tears. I'm just like, and I do, I've got quite a higher pain threshold, bear in mind as well. Ah! Oh, and the woman's like, You sound like you're in a lot of pain. Like, you need to go to the hospital. At this point, I'm thinking, Have I got appendicitis? Like, you know, all these things start going through your mind, especially when you've got some medical knowledge. It honestly makes it worse sometimes because you start panicking. I was like, What is going on? Um, and then, yeah, the doctor's like, I'm going to call you a car to take you to the hospital. Um, cause I was like, I can't move. I can't drive. Like I've got no one really to help me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what am I going to do? I live by myself. Like if something happens, I'm buggered. And I really didn't want to go to hospital all this time. But I was like, you know what? The pain's so bad. If I can just get some painkillers or something and just ride this out. Cause normally I'll just ride out pain, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. I got taken to the, I got taken to the hospital. I got out. I was in agony. I was in the hospital for nine hours. And the thing that shocked me yeah, is I went to the, you know, they give you like the, whatever you call it, bracelet tag thing. And I looked down at the MRN number at the bottom and literally smack bang in the middle, it was 666. You can see this here. Now, I don't, obviously it could just be a coincidence, but I don't really believe in coincidences. But I was like, I feel like I'm being spiritually attacked. Like I really feel like I am. And I was like, that's mad that the main number is 666. Anyway, at these times I was just like, I was just in pain. I was thrown up in the hospital still. Like it was bad. They gave me painkillers didn't really touch the pain i was just like oh it was uh it was terrible finally ended up seeing the doctor they were supposed to do an abdominal scan but i never had one they did bloods and said there were some things that, that were high on my bloods and then they did urine samples but it said the urine samples were fine um but yeah i had about five ivs i don't know what i was given i was just given so much stuff by then i still left the hospital in pain even though i've been given strong pain medication i was still in pain so I went home and it was better in it. I managed to get a bit of steep or whatever, but they, they sent me home with quite a lot of tablets. And then the doctors, when I spoke to them the next day, were like, are you sure you're on those tablets? I'm like, well, yeah, because they're in front of me. They're like, um, that might be a mistake. They're very strong. I stopped taking the tablets. I took a couple of them. I haven't taken them since. I'm not really somebody that would, don't get me wrong. Like I'm very much against chronic medicine. I'm not against acute medicine in some terms. Like if someone's in extreme acute pain, I'm never against them taking a pharmaceutical product for that. If they're in a car crash, whatever. I think some acute, and I've always said this, I've always preached this since day one. So it's not a new thing. I've always said when it comes to some acute trauma, I do respect what they do. It's the chronic stuff I have more of an issue with. But anyway, this is not what this video is about. But yeah, I don't, I don't really like taking medicine anyway. So, um, not gonna lie, I didn't take all the all the stuff that I got when I got back. Although, like I said, I had about five IVs of stuff put in me when I was in the hospital. Anyway, um, I did take a couple of painkillers, um, which to be fair helped a bit, but I still didn't fully get rid of the pain. Um, it was just, yeah, it was crazy. And then, yeah, I came home and ever since then I was in pain. Like it wasn't, I don't think it ever reached the point it did on that Tuesday where I had to go to hospital. But I was still in a lot of pain. Like I couldn't move. I couldn't properly stand up. And because I couldn't properly stand up, like my whole back was going into spasms. So sometimes my stomach would start hurting. It would refer around to my back, which is why I think they thought it was spreading. But I was sure, and I'm not saying that I know more than the doctor, but I was sure because I know my body. And obviously I do know a fair amount about the body, but I'm not saying I'm a doctor by any means. But I just felt like my back pain was secondary because I couldn't stand and I was so tense. Like everything was so tense, like my back was just spasming. So I was like, I, I think that's why my back's hurting. I never, I never personally felt like it was because that some infection was spreading or whatever. Like I just felt like my back was just seizing up, like the muscles were like rock solid and I was literally bent over because of my stomach was in so much pain. But yeah, I still, I couldn't move, I couldn't walk. I, could, I couldn't even make it to the toilet at times. It was that bad. Um, and you know, there, it was just, it was mad. I couldn't move, I couldn't do stuff around the house. I couldn't eat. Um, it was just insane and I could only sleep in like very certain positions so I weren't getting great sleep and this just continued I'm not gonna lie like it didn't ease up for like nearly a week like slowly uh, li literally towards the last three or four days was the only time I started to feel better like I had to have thank god for my friends and I really do I really do praise god for that because my friend came you know helped me I had some food dropped to me people you know helped do a couple of things around my house for me that I couldn't do um so yeah like it was kind of crazy and i was just like what is going on 
um they i think i've said earlier in the video they diagnosed me with a really severe bladder infection that they thought maybe it spread into a little bit of my kidneys or up my back but i was just like obviously my urine sample was fine but sometimes you can have an okay urine sample and still have a bladder infection but i just i know it sounds crazy but i just felt to myself like i just really didn't feel like that was what the problem was i was convinced it was to do with my colon and i'm still convinced it's to do with my colon now but i didn't eat for a week obviously I didn't go to the toilet for a week like my stomach's literally only even now it's not fully gone down and it's been nearly two weeks um but the pain has now gone i still get a little bit of a pull and a stitchy pain on my right side but it's, it don't really bother me anymore so i'd say i'm like 95 percent better now i'm able to eat normally again now i'm able to go to the toilet normally again now like Ah, oh, it was just, it was insane. And I i really did feel like, and like, I don't think, I'm not saying everything is always to do with this, but a large percentage of things are, but I really did feel like this was an attack. Um, and literally, especially as I just got on my feet, especially it was just the week where I said I was going to get back on it. And that was my day where it was my busiest day and I was actually smashing it as well. Even though I didn't feel great about it, like I was doing what I had to do and I felt good for that. Um, Cause afterwards I feel good, you know, like I'm glad I've done what I need to do. Like I've, I've fought my anxiety and all that kind of stuff. And I still don't have anxiety now, which I'm extremely grateful for to God. Um, and I prayed a lot on that, but I just, I really felt like it was a, a really, really, really bad test. Um, and it was difficult. Like even during some of that time at the, at the start, like I smoked, cause obviously I was in pain. Not that that's ever the answer. Cause it's not, but I'm just being honest. Um, you know, I should have gone to God more, but I, I couldn't even think straight. Like, I was in so much pain, but I should have been more in my word at the time than what I was. I was definitely being attacked. Um, and yeah, I, I feel a lot better now. Um, like I'm not smoking now. <clears throat> um, I'm back in the word. I'm back listening to my worship music. I'm back praying. I'm doing my Arsenal prayers. Like I am coming for the devil. I am coming back and I'm coming back strong. It don't matter how many times you fall, it matters how you get back up. And I'm coming back strong and I'm coming for the devil and I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Like this, even just not being able to do anything made me realize how much I really wanted to do stuff, even though before I felt like I may have been being a little bit lazy, but I'm on it now. Like I'm coming back, um, I'm on it. I'm, I'm down for the spiritual warfare because it is going to get worse so you know we've, we've got to just keep getting stronger like I'm on it I'm out for the devil right now I'm going to back on doing my exposing new age stuff obviously I have to make sure I'm covered so I'm just working up towards that I'm not releasing anything like that right this second but I'm going to start doing some research start filming again um and yeah I'm really excited about that so I'm just yeah I'm just excited to come for to come for the devil and work for the kingdom like I want God to do his will with my life um and obviously I know I'm still gonna get keep getting attacked, but I feel a lot better and stronger to be able to deal with that now. Like I said, we have to make sure we have the right tools. We can't be turned into worldly things as which I've done before, um, to deal with that kind of stuff. Like we need to turn to God in these last few days. Like I just I was just praying, like, please. <laughs> I was like, I don't want this to be some type of weird ongoing issue. But I knew, in my heart, I knew it wasn't going to be. I was like, when I'm better, I know I'm going to be fully cured and it's not going to bother me again. Like, I know this isn't... Because you know on the phone, the doctor's like, oh, you know, you might need to go back and get checked out. I was like, I ain't going back. Nope, not doing it. He's like, you might need to go back, get checked out. You know, it might be a long term underneath it. She said, nope, <laughs> not me. God wouldn't do that to me. That's not happening. So I was like, nope. I know God's going to fully heal me. I don't need to go back. And um, yeah, I feel that in my heart right now. I feel it in my body. I feel so much better. And I know for a fact I'm not going to have to go back. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. I praise God for that. Um, I actually praise God for putting me through this in a way or letting me go through this, I should say, because I feel like it has actually done me a, a favor in a weird way because it's given me another bit of a kick. I feel a bit more passionate, which is great. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just ready for the war, you know? And it's like, we just got to keep building ourselves up and building ourselves up and don't like i said to people don't feel bad if you've had relapse if you feel i really do feel like the last in the net the last few weeks of the spiritual warfare has been higher so if you felt that as well um you know keep pushing keep staying strong do not let the devil win out here you know it's so easy to fall back into worldly things i see so many people even before like even falling back into new agey type stuff and it's sad man but we can just pray for these people i pray for all of you um and yeah, I wanted to do a spiritual warfare prayer with you guys at the end of this video as well. They are some of my favorite prayers to do because I just feel like they're really powerful. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that today. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone's blessed. I hope everyone's well. Um, and yeah, I hope you can keep pushing forward now. I just, yeah, I just I do feel like I was like, literally like ready. I was like, yeah, I'm getting back on this. Like I'm on it. And then the devil was just like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Slap. I was slapped straight back down to the ground, quick time. 
But yeah, it's okay because we rise again. Like the devil will not win. Uh, and I was still, probably because I'd just come out of a relapse and I was just getting back on it. Like you're, you're still that little bit vulnerable, you know. So it's a good time for the devil to come in really when you think about it. But yeah, that weren't even, it wasn't even like a mental thing. Like it literally hit me out of nowhere. It wasn't like, oh, it wasn't like I was like, Sometimes I do feel like, though, maybe it was also a lesson because when I was cancelling work before, yeah, which we should never lie. Lying is obviously bad. Definitely not encouraging lying. But like, I didn't tell that when I would cancel my patients, sometimes I would lie because obviously I felt embarrassed to tell them that, oh, I've got really bad anxiety or oh, I'm going for. But there's ways of wording things. I was just being an idiot, really. And I really just wanted to soften the blow if I was being real um, to make myself feel better. So I lied and I would tell people, oh, I'm not well or I've got food poisoning like I can't come to work. I, I generally had genuine reasons. It just wasn't the ones that I told. Um, and I do feel like sometimes God was like, yeah, yeah, you want to lie about being ill? OK okay but anyway who knows who knows but whatever it was it happened i'm over it i feel much better now i feel on fire right now my anxiety is not here and it can stay the hell away because god's taken that from me and i praise god for that right now and i'm not saying that i won't have any other type of attacks obviously but at the moment like i'm feeling good i'm feeling strong and i just feel like now when it happens in the past i'm gonna have better coping strategies and the devils can't be as sneaky with me because I'm going to have better ways of dealing with it so that he can't win. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. If you have had a fall recently, like I said, keep praying for strength. Keep asking God to help you get back on your feet and fight this because we are in end times. Time is running out and we do not want the devil to win. And for me, it is a thing where it's like, I cannot let him have that over me, the devil. Like, nah, <laughs> no. But yeah, I just want to do, obviously read out these prayers. And then hopefully I will see you guys in my next YouTube video. So I'm just going to read out like the, a couple of the prayers. I probably won't read like scriptures with it as well. So I'm just going to go through the um, Arsenal prayers. These are the prayers that I did when I woke up this morning. I just feel like I feel very powerful when I do these prayers in terms of like I can feel the Holy Spirit. So yeah. Father, in Yeshua's name, by prayer and faith, I put on your whole armor that I may stand against the wiles of the devil. I put on your helmet of salvation, let the same mind be in me that is in Christ, Yeshua. I put on your breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. I put on the girdle of truth. Yeshua is the way, the truth and the life, the truth, integrity and the holiness of God. I put on your sandals of the gospel of peace. Help us to stand on the solid ground of Yeshua. Above all, I put on your shield of faith to quench every fiery dart, arrow, spear and missile the enemy shoots our way. And Lord, I put on your precious sword of the spirit, your holy word that's alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, our offensive and defensive weapon. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I ask you to keep the same hedge of protection around me, my family, my mind, my heart, emotions, as is written in Job verses 1.10. Father, in Yeshua's name, I ask you to keep an encampment of your powerful angels around me 24 hours a day. Father, in Yeshua's name, I ask you to send a host of ministering angels in addition to the one each believer has to minister to our hurts, needs, pains and infirmities, strengthening us in every way. Father, I just praise you and thank you that your glory is my rear guard. In Yeshua's name, I ask you to surround me with your supernatural wall of fire to insulate me from any assaults of the devil. Father, in Yeshua's name by faith, I claim your promise to be my shield and protector. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I command my thoughts to come under the obedience and captivity to Yeshua as it is written in 2 Corinthians 10 verses 5. In the name of Yeshua, the name that is above every name and all things, I bind up every unclean spirit and assignment coming against me, my children and my family from by or through anyone or anything named or unknown, known or unknown, seven generations back. In the name of Jesus, I bind up the principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness and hosts in higher places and the prince of power in the air. In Yeshua's name, I bind up the strong man, the old man, every prince and stronghold, the spirit of antichrist, every spirit and plague, the spirit of confusion, illusion and delusion. In Yeshua's name, I bind up the spirit of infirmity, sickness, disease, pain, addiction, affliction, calamity, the devourer, the destroyer, the accuser, the deceiver, the corrupter and every spirit of poverty. In the name of Yeshua, I bind up the spirit of strife and division, backbiting and gossip, critical and judgmental spirits, spirits of resistance and hindrance, every spirit of retribution, revenge and retaliation and the lying, seducing, deceiving spirit of 
deception. In the name of Yeshua, I bind up every root of fear, thou unbelief, discouragement, and every deadly deed from despair to depression. The spirit of pride, rebellion, disobedience, self-ego, independence, unforgiveness, bitterness, lust, and the flesh. In the name of Yeshua, we rebuke you, you evil, unclean spirits. I lose in the name of Yeshua, deliverance, freedom and liberation, peace, joy, hope, gladness of heart, love, healing and wholeness, mercy and grace, blessing and favour, restoration of the years that the locusts have eaten, the resurrection power of Christ, a mighty harvest and a boldness to witness for Christ. Amen, amen. And I really like this bit at the end that I just want to read on the one that I have. Always remember, God hears all our cries and prayers. His thoughts about us number more than the sands of the sea. He loves us with everlasting love. His promises are yes and amen. We know that Satan is a liar, but God has never lied nor broken a promise or covenant. He is the God of the second chance to infinity. Nothing is too hard nor impossible for him. With man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. He is faithful. His word does not return void. He magnifies his word above his name and his word is settled in heaven forever. We need to trust him in his word, no matter what trials or tribulations we are facing, whatever mountain, valley, desert, storm, or Goliath that is in our life, trust him. God is good, a stronghold in the day and trouble, and he knows who trust him. And he knows those who trust him. He tells us where we have worth and value in his eyes. He is our helper who has compassion, mercy, and grace for each of us. God's forgiveness is bigger than my sin. If I confess my sins, God is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Once I confess and repent, God remembers them no more. They are put in the sea of forgetfulness. They are under the blood of Yeshua. We are set free with no condemnation, especially from ourselves. We must learn to forgive ourselves. Praise and worship must be included in our prayers. We have the victory. Amen.